Rosman, uh, it. Oh. you open a cupboard, and as you open it up, you see a small village of little makeshift homes in the cupboard and a group of mice gathered in a, like a little town square of their little mice houses in the cupboard. And you see they all a collective kind of uh, goes up. Little mice? You see one of the mice steps out of the front and says, please your ladyship, you can eat me. Just don't eat the rest. Please don't turn us into nothing unnatural don't, or- Don't be afraid, I won't eat you. What happened to you? Well, well, we just been hiding. We has eaten them old wheels of cheese in the pantry yonder, but we, uh, we just been avoiding. Uh, we just been avoiding her. Who, who's her? The one up the road. She is. Uh, she came here once back a long, long years ago, but and and she, she shifted us. She did. Oh, you're the people of this town. No! No? She had done turned us into the people of this town. We's the mice of this town. You're the mice of this town that she turned into the people of this town? And I... now you're mice again, but you can talk? My cousin Ogbert was turned into a man. He was something terrible. And you see a little mouse uh, who's like next to this house they've like built out of like old playing cards and beeswax and stuff says, they were right off her barm. I was scurrying about looking for a bite of cheese, I was. And a lady shown up as she done with a crown and, and wings and that and floating and that. And she had come out to help. There there was a, a, a giant, you know, like yourself, a human. Um, and she, she was a nice enough lass and always shared some crumbs for us. And she slept right there in that bed by the fireplace. And you just see some like rags on the ground by the fireplace. So, and and one night, as it were, uh, this this horrifying, magical thing happened, and me and Donald, we was out there, and I he was faster than me, and and me and our cousin Norbert, she she took her wand up like this, she did, and she turned us into people. Oh no! It was like we wanted to drive a coach made out of a pumpkin to a ball and we came back and we remembered everything about it. She made us want to be good servants and, and we didn't even understand things like that. Oh, so. It was a whole four and a half hours it was of being people, unnatural like. And how long ago was that? I don't know, a couple of years. And you're still I'm a real upset about it. <laughs> wow. She, she, she does it, you know. She see some young lass uh, who uh, wants to win Queen of the Mayfair, and she, she don't care, no difference. And she'll make a donkey a butler, and a mouse a coachman, and and, and a, a bucket into a valet. And then there I am, a man talking to a man, but I'm a mouse, and he's really a bucket. <laughs> <laughs> It'll drive you mad if you think about it. Can I, Can I come in with my bucket of yeah, water? Yeah, you come in. Can I help? That could be a man. No, what? <laughs> it could. If she wants it, she'll turn you into anything, anything at all. Can I help you? What? Do you want to come with us? No, please, just don't tell anyone we're here. She hadn't come back. Oh. As long as there's not. Wait a minute. You're a young lassie! No! Ah! I'm actually what 118! What did she look like? You're 118, you I'm look 100. great! Thank you so much. <laughs> what did she look like? What was she wearing? Gown, gown and, and, and that, and a hood, and a crown, and ringlets, but last we saw her, it was different, even worse than before. She had come in and, you know, she had done her, her spells, but, the shadow had come. We had heard word from the people here. There were some other young women here. And their, their mother had gotten them to carve their toes off with a knife or cut their heels off their feet, like. And, and then the princess, she up and left. And that's when the storms came and, and that fairy came back with hollow eyes, mad beyond reckoning. 
turning all sorts of creatures of the field, beasts and birds, into seamstresses and garland makers. And she was grabbing up lassies left and right and making them fall in love, and it was a horror. That sounds awful. There was a, a shoe, right? Hoy, you know it? I think that's what we're looking for here. I think we're looking for the shoe. The shoe? The only information we had was that he turned the whole town upside down looking for someone to fit into the shoe. So well, I think we remember that's... we remember the shoe the first time, and we remember it the second. The two. second. Well, the first time it it were nothing more than a glass slipper. It were, and and that's why them girls had chopped off their heels and chopped off their toes. Pinocchio, hmm. you're down in the wine cellar having a ball. <laughs> Where... Or sorry. Are we? Are we? Okay. Oh, wait. Oh, you let them know eventually. Then cool. we're having a fucking ball. Right, yes. <laughs> You're having a fucking ball. I almost um, didn't tell you, idiots. <laughs> <laughs> um, God, what bint is this? Oh. Um, give me an Arcana check. I'm not good at that. That just happened one time, dude. <laughs> that's a. That's a four. A four. You, uh, I think oh, you're getting fucking blasted. You're just getting tipsy as hell. You're good. God damn it, Woo! God damn it, God damn it. <laughs> um, you see Donald, the sort of spokesman of the, the mice here, goes, Right, that first time it were a glass slipper. The second time, a girl had come back here. She'd come back because something had changed. The woman who used to live here she changed into something fierce. One night by the fireplace, she called her daughters down to her. We saw them go behind the chair by the fireplace, and we never saw them girls again. But that woman stood up. She got on a horse. We, we had known her to have a name before then, but none could remember it after that. And shortly after that, uh, her highness, the princess, come back. And she came here because she knew something foul had happened. Both those daughters were gone, and the woman who used to live here had left. The place was abandoned. Princess came back, and she, and, and that, you see that the other one, Norbert says, and that's when the, the fairy came back too. She had come back, uh, and she told the princess to get back to the castle, keep living her happy life with the prince-like, said get back to things as they were and as they should be. And the princess looked at her, told her she were a foul thing, that fairy. She broke off the heel of one of them glass slippers. And the last time we saw it, she had took it up in her hand. And that young lady, who ain't been nothing more than an ash maid, treated so awful by her sisters, she took a spear of glass and threw it and drove it through the heart of that fairy there. Cinderella killed the godmother. Where did this happen? In the living room? Right outside. It happened out by the well. And can I go the... sniff around for blood to get a... Yes, you can. A uh, give me a survival check with advantage. Can I call that or, to or the perception. guys? Yeah. Hey, everyone. What? <laughs> Why not? Um, I'm gonna yeah. go ahead and add the bardic inspiration. What, yeah, go what for it. is D6. that? D six. D six. We're not partying down here. <laughs> okay, that is an eighteen. You smell old blood. Fairy blood stains forever. It smells like spice and cinnamon and sparks and embers. Does it smell like the blood of a stepmother or a godmother or a mother or a grandmother or a maiden? <laughs> or a it smells like a godmother. We got godmother blood. <laughs> <laughs>